Praise the Lord. What an honor and a privilege it is to minister to each and every one of you again on this uh, Tuesday night. Uh, thank you for joining our Wednesday night Bible class, our Bible study. Uh, there is uh, a great message, a great word from the Lord that I want to share Excuse me, with each and every one of you. I want to share with you what thus saith the Lord out of the book of John chapter 3. Uh, we are in John chapter 3. Uh, we are dealing with verses um, 19 through 21 uh, and then verses 22 through 24. Uh, and so uh, look at that tonight. John chapter 3 verses 19 through 21 and then verses 22 through 24. We are coupling these verses together in a separate way or in a separate order only because um, they kind of deal with different um, lessons or different um, messages, um, different things that the Lord wants us to learn from these passages. Um, and so that's why we chopped them up. So again, tonight we are dealing with John chapter 3 verses 19 through 21 and John chapter 3 verses 22 through 24. All right. I'm going to do my very best uh, to get us through these scriptures. Uh, I know I get excited and amped up uh, when I start talking about the word of the Lord. And I, I know many of you uh, get excited when you hear the preaching and teaching of God's word. And so I want to thank you again for joining with us in our Bible study uh, that we might learn together, that we might grow together. Uh, that's that's one thing that that is really in my spirit during this season. God wants us to grow together. He wants us to learn together. He wants us to study his word. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's what God is calling all of us to be. He's calling all of us to be, um, he's calling all of us to be stewards of the word, students of the word, people that actually sit down, look at the scriptures, try to understand the scriptures, um, as they were intended for them to be understood and uh, to then apply those scriptures to our lives. Uh, one of the things that I like to say as people are still coming in, one of the things I like to say is that every word has a piece in it for you. Um, the entire message may not be for you, but there may be a nugget um, for you in there. Um, and so I want you all um, to as you listen to the word of God, find that nugget, find that piece of, of, of word that is applicable to your life or applicable to your situation and, and, and feast on that. Even if you got to feast on it for four to five days, six to seven days, two or three weeks, uh, I'm still getting um, messages from people that say, Pastor, uh, when you preached um, forever is a long time, but when you preached, um, I, I, I preached a message uh, maybe a year or so ago, entitled, Lord, deliver me from petty people. And people are still talking about that message because there are times when you can feast off God's word and you can really take it in and hone in on what the Lord is saying to you. All right, so we're gonna pray and then we're gonna jump right into the word of the Lord, okay? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you for your outstretched hand. Thank you for protecting us and loving us, um, loving us in spite of, loving us because of, um, because of your sacrifice on the cross, God, you loved us because of that. Um, we know that you loved us because that was the greatest example of love. You said, greater love have no man than this, than he lay down his life for his friends. You laid down your life for us, and for that we give you praise, glory, and honor. We honor you for who you are. We honor you for uh, not just leaving us with your spirit and not just leaving us with relationship with you, but you left us a road map. That road map is the word of God, and, and we thank you for that word because that word brings life to us. It brings strength to us. It brings help to us in the time of need. That word truly is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. That word, it convicts us and converts us and makes us. That word, it cleanses us. Um, Paul said that we could be washed through the word of God. David said, how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed or by following God's word. And so, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that your word gets all down into the crooks and crannies of our lives. And we ask you now to speak out of 
speak out of the volume of your book. Speak in the name of Jesus. Speak your word to your people this day. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Forgive us of our sins. Allow our sins to be illuminated by the preaching and teaching of your word tonight. We love you forever and ever. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray and we give thanks. Amen. All right, let's jump right into um, God's word tonight. Let's jump um, into a John chapter three. Uh, John chapter three, verses 19 through 21. I'm going to pull those verses up myself. John chapter 3, verses 19 through 21. It simply says, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Verse 21, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Again, I want to read those again to get those in your spirit. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. I, I want to, I want to um, start by simply looking at verse 18, because we actually talked about how when you accept Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ. Um, there, are, there is no guilt. Uh, when you belong to Jesus Christ. And, and that's something that we have to embrace more and more. Um, we live in a world where people um, always remember and they are bound to remember and bound to always remind you of your sin or of your wrongdoing. Um, even if you live a righteous life and do one thing that upsets somebody, sometimes those people don't forget those things easily. Uh, and sometimes they like to remind you and throw those things up in your face and different things of that sort. Uh, and when people do those kinds of things, um, what they're really doing is condemning you, making you guilty of that sin or that wrongdoing. Uh, and the problem with that is when you accept Jesus Christ, there is no condemnation. You are not guilty of sin when you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul says there is now therefore no, no, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. You are not guilty of sin when you give your life to the Lord. Um, however, Jesus says in verse 19 that a condemnation did come into the world. People would be considered guilty of sin. Why? How, Jesus? Well, this is how condemnation came into the world. Light came into the world. Okay, that still doesn't explain to me how people are condemned. I understand light came into the world. Jesus is the light of the world. He brought light into the world. What? How, how did condemnation get here? Jesus came, but how did condemnation get here? How did guiltiness for sin get back into the world? Here it is. Light came into the world and men loved darkness, uh-oh, rather than light. So I said to you that when you give your life to Christ, he does not condemn you. He does not make you guilty of sin. You, He that knew no sin became sin for you so that you can become the righteousness of God. And so when you accept Jesus Christ, you become the righteousness of God. Everything falls off of your life that is old. Old things are passed away. The old, all things become new, right? However, Jesus says, you can condemn yourself. You can bring yourself into condemnation. How? By loving darkness rather than loving light. So many times, so many times 
we as the people of God, we choose darkness rather than choosing light. How, Pastor? Well, you choose darkness every time. Every time you sin, you choose darkness over light. Every time you cuss that person out, you choose darkness over light. Every time you try to get into an argument with someone, rather than giving them a soft word, which Proverbs said a soft word turns away wrath, Every time you you pick fights and get into arguments, you choose darkness over light. Every time you disobey your husband, uh oh, preach pastor. Every time you go against the prick in your home or go against a man, the 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 wise counsel of your wife, <laughs> preach pastor. Every time you do that, you choose darkness over light. And sometimes, sometimes we only think darkness to be those big sins. But what is a big sin? There is no big sin. Amen. No sin outweighs another. So 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 if you choose to fornicate, that's choosing darkness over than light. If you choose to do adultery, if you choose to steal, or if you choose to speak ill of your neighbor, if you choose to bear false witness or tell a lie, you choose darkness over light. And Christ says when you do that, you bring yourself into condemnation. You, you bring a guilty sentence over your own life. Why? Because you chose darkness over light. And, and, and all of us, all of us, all of us, I said this Sunday in the message, all of us at some point or another has sinned. We have all chose darkness over light. But Christ says when you do that, you bring yourself into condemnation. You, you, you allow yourself to be guilty of sin. Right when you choose darkness over light. And listen, it's it's easy to choose darkness. Preach, Pastor. Come on, the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and sin that what? Does so easily beset us. I tell people all the time, if you're not careful, sin will sneak up on you. You you, you won't even realize you're in sin until you're in it. And sometimes you're in it so deep, it ain't so easy to get back out of it. Especially if, if, if you done got in sin with somebody and, and you having a good time and, and, and y'all in that thing deep, y'all y'all enjoying yourself. And then when you look back and say, Lord, how did I get in this mess? And how do I get out of it? Come on, say amen. Amen. But Jesus says when you choose darkness over light, you bring yourself into condemnation. You bring yourself, amen, excuse me. You bring yourself into condemnation. You bring yourself into a guilty sentence. And again, it's easy to do that. The Bible says the spirit is always willing, but the flesh is what? Weak. And and Jesus doesn't mean that your flesh is weak in that uh, your spirit can always overpower. No, your flesh is really strong. But what Jesus was saying is the spirit always wants to do right. But that's not the case for the flesh. The flesh wants to satisfy itself. It wants to gratify itself. And sometimes we, 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 we fall victim to our flesh. Satisfying, pleasing what, what John wants or pleasing what, what, what you as a person want. Not so much uh, glorifying God in your body. Sometimes we just please our body. Please our flesh. Even if it's down to, man, that pineapple cake was good. And I love pineapple cake, so I'm talking to me too. Uh, I love sweets. Anybody know me know I love some good old sweets. I love a good homemade cake. I was actually asked uh, either yesterday or today. I don't remember which one uh, or this weekend. I don't remember. Uh, I was asked to make another pound cake. But see, the problem with me making pound cake is I make pound cake, but then I go to the store or or uh, I've, I've gotten into this thing now to drive to Warsaw and go to the farmer's market. I got to buy strawberries. I got to cut the strawberries up. I got to put sugar in them. I got to put some whipped cream on it. You know, see, so I, I've gotten into the habit now of, of how I like my pound cake. All right. But too much of anything ain't good. Amen. Amen. And so what I want us to understand today is that it's easy to fall victim to, to sin and it's easy to fall victim um, to our flesh. Um, and, and sometimes pleasing our flesh seems like the right thing, whether it be buying clothes, eating too much, spending unnecessarily, that that, that all that all goes into feeding our flesh and, and, and giving our flesh what our flesh wants, or what, what we think our flesh deserves. Right. After a long day of work, sometimes you feel like you deserve <laughs> to have a good time and splurge. Right. But sometimes gratifying that flesh doesn't always uh end up in the right way. And the Bible says there is a way that seemeth right, seemeth good, but the end is death and destruction. Amen. Um, 
uh, in my notes here, I got for centuries, messianic prophecies, meaning futuristic words, foretellings of God. Um, they were declared about the coming Messiah. The prophets of old spoke about the coming Messiah back into the days of Moses. Moses talked about the coming of the Messiah. What did he say? It would be the seed of the woman that would grow up and bruise the head of the serpent. Um, and then uh, Jeremiah made reference to Jesus in that he talked about the potter uh, being remade on the potter's wheel. He talked about that. But then Ezekiel talked about him in that he said, um, he talked about the wheel in the middle of a wheel. Isaiah talked about him when he said, surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did a stream him uh, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And, um, and by his stripes we are healed. For all we like sheep have gone astray and turned to our own way. But the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. And so, so for centuries, uh, prophets of old spoke about the coming Messiah. They spoke about Jesus. It was known throughout all Jewish and Hebrew circles that Jesus Christ would come to redeem them from the sting of death and the power of sin, which was the law. Jesus Christ did not come to condemn the law or to bring guilt sentences to those that follow the law, but he came to fulfill the law. He came to tell them that everything that the Old Testament spoke about spoke about him. The water that gushed out of the rock spoke about Jesus Christ and his spirit. Amen. The manna that fell down from heaven spoke about Jesus Christ. Why? Because he was the bread of heaven, the bread of life. Amen. Amen. And so he, he talked about how Jesus would come and what he would do when he would come. I like what Elder Valerie said. Jesus would come to deal with sin. Amen. The sting of death and the power of, 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 of sin. The sting of death was sin. The power of sin was the law. The law made us conscious of our sin. However, man chose to reject Christ. Jesus came to do away with um, sin. Um, uh, he came to do away with sin. He came to get rid of sin. He came, amen, to, to, to present to us the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. However, men rejected Jesus Christ. They chose to continue to walk in darkness as if they were blinded by a light. Can I get a witness there? All right. Um, that, that's a good point. They chose to walk in darkness as if they were blinded by a light that stood before them. Amen. They 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 knew Jesus was coming. They knew he was going to bring um, a difference into the world. They knew he was he was going to be. Uh, uh, a different light or a different person and bring salvation into the world. However, they looked at him as if he was not the one. He's literally telling them, I am he. I am the one that cometh in the name of the Lord. I am the one that God sent. He said, I must do the works of him that sent me uh, uh, while it is day for night is soon to come and no man can work. Jesus, Jesus literally tells them, I'm here. And they reject him. Uh, and, and, and oftentimes this is the same um, consensus of the world today. Jesus is here. Uh, look, we, we were, we're in a pandemic where we're, 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 we're seeing natural disaster. We're seeing men dying left and right. Uh, and, and the words of Christ are literally being unfolded. What did Jesus say in that day? You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Amen. He says, nation shall be against nation. Kingdom shall be against kingdom. Amen. Jesus also said in another instance, mother shall be against father and son shall be against daughter. What, 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 uh, Jesus literally tells us all these things are going to be. All these things are going to come to pass, but we still have people out here taking the world by storm, doing any and everything that they think they're big and bad enough to do. Amen. And that was the same thing, amen, in Jesus's day. These people chose to walk in darkness as if they were blinded by the light that stood before their eyes. Catch this. Even when they were given a chance to choose Christ, over a murderer, they chose Barabbas. They chose the murderer. Pilate literally told them, I find no fault in this man. This man has done no wrong. And, and, and that was their chance to accept the light of Christ. That was their chance to embrace Jesus Christ. But they didn't do that. 
My friends, they didn't do that. They rejected Jesus there and said, give us the murderer. They knew he was wrong. They knew he was convicted. They knew that he had committed sin, but they rather they would rather walk in darkness rather than loving the light of Jesus Christ. They preferred darkness rather than accepting Jesus Christ. And, and we see this best a few days or a few moments before the crucifixion. On Palm Sunday, man, they were praising Jesus, crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. I mean, they were giving God praise. They were giving God glory. They were worshiping him and celebrating him because they knew that in a few short days, he would have the victory over sin. He would take the sting out of death, amen, and take the victory out of the grave. They were praising him, crying, Hosanna. But oh, in a few days, when when when, when they were given the chance to, to, to embrace him and to accept him as Lord, they, what did they cry? Crucify him, crucify him. They, 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 even though he, they, the, even though Pilate has washed his hands and said, I find no fault in this man, they still preferred darkness over the light of Jesus Christ. And, and, and that really, that really, that really hurt hurt the heart of Christ to, 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 to come into your own and your own receive you not that, that they really reject that really hurt Christ in another way. And I often wonder, I often wonder, I know the scripture says when we sin or when we fall short, we crucify him afresh, but I often wonder if we really think about um, 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 the hurt we put Christ through when we reject him and, and, and how that makes him feel. Amen. After, after blessing you and after uh, 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 doing extraordinary and supernatural things in our lives, after, after, after blessing you time and time again and you refuse to go to church. Or you refuse to log on to the live. Or you refuse to pay your tithes and offering. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. But when you refuse to do those kinds of things, or when you refuse to give your service, or when you refuse to carry your portion of the ministry, how do you think that makes God feel after blessing you? That's that's the kind of rejection he got. And and and, and, and the, the greatest rejection that, that, that you can give or that you can present to Christ is when you reject not believing in him when you refuse to believe that he is the son of God that is the worst rejection you can give that 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 puts you in the same category with them religious folk down in the Bible days they 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 they, they reject when you reject Jesus Christ amen you put yourself in a place amen to put to, to, to be just like those that were in that religious day. And, and that hurts Christ. And I want to show you how much that hurts Christ. I want you to go to Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 34. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 34. This, this actually shows us uh, how Jesus felt when they rejected him. Talking about them loving uh, darkness rather than light. Luke chapter 13, verses 31 through 34. Luke chapter 13, verse 31 through 34. And I got to put glasses on. I don't know. I used to laugh at people when they said they need their extra eyes. But uh, my day, they told me my day was going to come. And they didn't tell a story. All right. Luke chapter 13, verse 31 through 34. Uh, it says, the same day there came certain of the Pharisees saying unto him, get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. Verse 32. And he said unto them, go ye and tell that fox, meaning tell Herod, behold, I cast out devils and do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day shall be perfected. Nevertheless, I must walk today and tomorrow and the following day, for it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. Jesus said, look, I know they're after me. He said, but I got to do what I got to do. Amen. And I, and I think this is one of the greatest scriptures. And, and maybe the Lord will release me one day to preach a message entitled, Do 
what you got to do. Because what people don't understand is when you get in ministry, you get on the hit list of hell. Anything that could happen will happen. Anything people can say, they will say. Any Anytime people can drag you through the mud, they're going to do that. But what did Jesus say? I got to do what I got to do. He said, he said, go tell the fox. He said, I'm going to keep on casting out devil. I'm going to keep on doing cures today and tomorrow. He said, he said, they can kill me all they want to, but on the third day, I shall be perfected. Why? Because I'm going to get up out of that grave. He said, he said, I got to walk today and I got to walk tomorrow. He said, boy, it cannot be said that a prophet perished out of Jerusalem. Listen, people are going to say anything against you. People are going to raise all kinds of hell, but you can't let the hell people are raising stop you from doing the ministry God called you to do. Why? Because you were not called by people. You were called by God. You're not doing a ministry for people. Yes, you're serving people, but you serve people because you are serving God. Come on now. Amen. Amen. What did Jesus say? I must work the words of him that sent me. Know who sent you. Know who you belong to. Know, amen, exactly what God has called you to do and what your mission and your commission is. Your commission and your mission come from God. Amen. And so Jesus said, I can't let it be said, amen, that, that I gave in to what people said. And I, and I just fell victim to what Herod said. He said, I got to do what I got to do. Amen. Verse 34, it says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are unto thee. He said, let me talk to y'all. He said, let me talk to y'all. He said, you killed your prophets. Amen. He said, you, you, you stoned them. You beheaded them. You did all kind of crazy stuff to the people that were coming to, 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 to give you a word of God. Uh, but, but listen to this. He said, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killeth the prophets and stoneth them that are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together? As a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, but ye would not. Jesus said, I came. I came to embrace you. I came to bring you into the ark of safety. I came to cover you and to nurture you and to grow you in the name of the Lord. He said, I came for that purpose. Hallelujah. He said, but I came to my own, but my own wouldn't receive me. He, Jesus said, Jesus said, all you had to do was accept me. He says, well, if you would accept me, he said, I would have gathered you together <laughs> like a hen under her chicks. He, he said, he said, I would have brought you together like a hen under her wings. I would have protected you. I would have nurtured you. I would have been your God and you would have been my people. He said, but no matter how much I preach to you, no matter how much I baptize, no matter how much I proclaim the word, you would not. And I'm, I'm hate to say this, but it's the same thing going on in the world today. No matter how much preachers are preaching, no matter how much they're teaching the word of God, no matter how much they're proclaiming Jesus Christ, we still have a remnant of people, and I'm talking about a remnant in the church, that come to church, they get on live, they sing in the choir, they sing on the praise team, they have these titles, they have these positions, but they are still Still rejecting Jesus Christ, Re still rejecting him, still refusing to believe that he is the son of God, still refusing to believe that he came to die for their sins. And how do we know that, they, 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 that, they, they, that they're living in disbelief? We know that because of the way they're living, because of the way they give their time to God, because of the way they fast and pray, because of their reluctancy to go to church or their reluctancy to get on live, their reluctancy, amen, to do what God God has called us to do in these last and evil days. That is a sign that men would rather love darkness rather than loving God. And I want you to understand today that when you do that, you are setting yourself up for eternal damnation. All Christ asked you to do was believe on him. All he asked you to do, listen, you don't got to jump up seven times. You don't got to run around the church. You don't got to do cartwheels. You don't have to give your money and get some spring water from online. You don't have to do any of that thing. The thing that will send you to hell the quickest is not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. All he asks you to do is believe on me. What did the what, 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 what did the man tell uh, uh, Paul and Silas when, when they were loosed in chains after the earthquake, after praying and giving God praise? What, 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 what did he say? What must I do to be saved? And what was Paul and Silas to respond? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou and thy house shall be saved so that this is what christ is this is what christ is calling us to do christ is, is is in this passage in luke christ is riding into jerusalem telling jerusalem look y'all rejected me i came to bring you a better covenant i came to bring you a better life but you rejected me 
one of the things that, that, that stands out to me uh, um, this week alone is that uh, got some friends that are exploring, becoming exploratory as it relates to uh, Christianity. And they're, they're reading different things about other faiths and different things like that. Um, and, and, and that really bothers me. It, it, it bothers me simply because um, it bothers me simply because we get wrapped up into the systems of this world. We get wrapped up with people telling us this and telling us that. And the first thing we want to do is turn our back on God, turn our back on what we know. But listen, listen, I've come too far. I'm too far gone now to turn my back on Jesus Christ. There are some things that have happened in my life that I can look back and say, look, did nobody do that but the Lord Jesus Christ? Listen, I I am a hundred. I said this in noonday prayer today. I am a hundred percent times a hundred percent times a hundred percent bona fide believer in Jesus Christ. That's just who I am. I, I, I believe that he's the son of God. I believe that he is everything to me. And I don't know about you, but I believe that. I believe that wholeheartedly that he is. And, and I don't want I don't want on judgment day for Christ to look at me and say, you rejected me. So depart from me. You you didn't embrace me. So so leave me alone. You you can't dwell in the eternal joys of heaven forever. You can't enjoy the eternal joys of the kingdom of God, eternity with me, because you rejected me. I want it to be said that I told everybody I was a believer. I want it to be said that I proclaimed that I was a believer. I want it to be said that I encourage other people to be believers. Nothing makes me happier than, than, than a member of one of my churches coming up to me and said, look, Pastor, I told somebody about the oneness of God today. I told somebody today that they needed to believe in Jesus Christ because what that what that says to me is we're preaching the right thing. We're teaching the right thing. We're telling people that you got to believe. Don't reject them because he said, if you be ashamed of me in front of men, I'll be ashamed of you in front of my father. I don't want I don't want to get up there with God, the father and God, the son. And he said, John, you had a chance to tell somebody you were a believer, but you didn't do it. So depart from me. I know you not. You work of iniquity. But I want to be like the man that had five talents and go out and get five more. I want to be like the man who had two talents. Go out and get two more. I don't want to be like the one who buried it saying Jesus is coming back. I'm going to save mine because I don't want to lose it. No, I want to be able to go out there and say I, I made a difference in the world. I, I preach Jesus Christ. I turned this world upside down by proclaiming that Jesus is alive and Jesus is well. If you haven't helped somebody become a believer, you haven't done your job as a Christian. Uh oh. Your main goal and priority ought to be encouraging people to believe on Jesus Christ and not to reject him in this world that we live. Amen. Amen. There is nothing new under the sun. Nothing new under the sun. The same thing I'm battling with, somebody else battled with. The same struggle you had, somebody else had it. The only difference is, it's you. <laughs> the only difference is, it's you. That, that, that's the only difference. Okay? That's the only difference in sin, the person, not the sin itself. There's nothing new under the sun. The rejection Christ encountered from his own people is similar if not the same to the rejection persons give Jesus now. People are willing to reject the light of Christ. And, 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 I, and, I, and I want to place emphasis on the word willing. People are willing to reject the light of Christ. They are willing. They are willing to dismiss a light that can dispel all traces of darkness. We, we as a people, we as a people are willing to dismiss something that can get rid of everything we struggle with. I, I really don't think people uh, embrace that. We want or we desire to reject somebody that can make everything right in our lives. He can dispel all traces of darkness. He can. In other words, the light of Christ overpowers the sin of our lives 
with illumination from God's word. So the light of Christ really is revealed to us through his word. As we learn and study his word, that word lights up the darkness in our lives. It's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. God's word illuminates or shines a light on the sin of our lives. But it does not shine a light on our sin to make us feel bad. It shines a light on our sin to get us in right standing with God. He only allows the word to convict you so that you can so that you can see where you have faltered, where you have messed up. Too many times we hear people preach a message that is convicting and all they want to say is you're going to hell, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. But that's really not the true gospel. When Christ told that girl or that lady at the well, go and sin no more. Or when he told her, let he that is without sin cast the first stone. He was not condoning her sin. He was allowing the light of the word to convict her. Yeah, girl, you messed up. But now that you messed up, go and sin no more. Amen. When he tells the woman at the well, when he tells her, you ain't got one husband, you got five. He wasn't condoning her sin. But he was allowing the illumination from his word, the light that he was, the light of Christ, he was allowing that to shine on her light, but also to dispel that darkness and to get her in right standing with God. All right. Christ's light is a powerful light. It is a light that sin cannot comprehend or it is a light that sin cannot put out we learned that early on in in in, in chapter one all right when the bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god the word was god the same was in the beginning with god in him was life and that life was the light of man and darkness comprehended, well, and that light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. I don't care how dark your sin is. I don't care how big your sin is. I don't care. It cannot pierce through the light of Christ. Instead, the light of Christ can pierce through any sin. Pierce through any dark. That's why sometimes when the preacher preaching, it seems like the preacher preaching just to you. And you sitting there looking like, who done told the pastor my business? Why am I feeling like that? You feel like that because God's light is piercing through your darkness. Nobody, nobody has to tell the pastor your business. God's word, it pierces through. That's why I don't get, listen, I know stuff about every member of my church. Stuff that they do right and stuff that they do wrong. I might not say it all, but I know. But it's not my job to get up and preach about what I know based on what you're going through or what you're dealing with. That, 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 that's not my job. My job is to preach about the light because that light, <laughs> that light's going to pierce through. That thing that you do in the dark, that thing that you don't want nobody to know about, the light will pierce through that. All right? That's why I preached that message or the Lord had me to preach that message. I'm not the light. But I know who is. I know who can pierce through hearts. I know who can pierce through minds. I know who can change the thoughts of people. That's Jesus himself. Only Jesus can do something like that. So why not preach Jesus? Why not teach Jesus if I know that he's going to be the one that can get into the heart and the mind and the spirit of people? Why not tell people that there's a savior? Amen. We have to present Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is going to be the one that convicts and converts. There's no need for me to try to convict you. I need to try to present Jesus Christ to you and allow you to get a relationship with Jesus Christ. And as you draw nigh to God, he will draw nigh to you. And if you draw nigh to God and you begin to pick up the 
attributes of Christ, there's no way you can remain the person you are. I don't understand this new kind of theology and, and Jesus that people are preaching that you become great in yourself. No, you become great when you begin to know who Jesus is. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. As long as I live. One of the most powerful testimonies I've ever heard. Came from one of our members at Rivers of Life. I'll never forget what Candace told me. She says, as I begin to learn more about Jesus, I realize that I just don't want to do things that I normally would do. To me, that is one of the most powerful testimonies because what it says is when Christ gets in you and when you learn who Christ is, he begins to change you. And sometimes you don't even realize God is changing you until you get ready to do something that you used to do. And that light that Christ has presented, it pierces in your heart. Amen. That's what Christ does. And I want that to sink in. All right, let's see. Um, no matter the strength of our personal sins, it cannot stand to the light of Christ. The light of Christ can pierce through any darkness in our lives. Therefore, if a man continue, I want you to catch this. If a man continually walks in sin after knowing Jesus Christ, it is not because the light has not shined. It's because he has made a choice. We have made a choice to hold on to sin rather than making a choice to allow God's light to illuminate our lives. All I want you to know, and I'm closing. All I want you to know, my friends, is Christ came to bring a light into your life. And sometimes that light isn't a favorable one. Sometimes when God shines his light, it hurts. Sometimes God's light shines in our lives and it hurts because he shines on things of us that we we just love and want to hold on to. But the good thing is that he only hurts us or he only cuts us to heal us. And he's only putting that light on us so that he can bring you into right standing with him. Uh, that's all. I Well, that's not all I have tonight, but I don't want to hold you much long. Um, when we're in the sanctuary, it's kind of different because we're talking to each other. Uh, but online, I, I want to give you that quick power of God, that quick, powerful word, and then allow you to enjoy the rest of your nights. I, I want to encourage you, accept the light of Christ, accept Jesus, believe in Jesus, embrace Jesus. Um, he, he He's more than enough, and he will give you exactly what you need. Father, again, thank you for your word. Your word brings life and your word brings truth to us. Thank you for allowing that light to shine on our lives and to shine in darkness. Darkness comprehended it not. We love you today for the light of Christ. We love you for all things that you do for you do all things well. In Jesus' name, amen. Before you leave, before you leave off of live, I want each and every one of you um, so so something tonight. Amen. I want you to go to that Facebook page, click on that uh, link, uh, click on that link and, and give something. If this word blessed you tonight, even if it's just one dollar, one cent, whatever it is, give something tonight. Go to that Facebook link, click that link and give in the name of the Lord. Um, if, 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 if you don't want to give through Facebook, you can text your gift of any amount to 910-335-8663. Again, that number is 910-335-8663. Or you can send your gift of any amount to Rivers of Life with the number two, Rivers of Life 2 in Cash App. Rivers of Life 2, capital R, capital L, capital R, capital O, capital L, and the number two, Rivers of Life 2. All right, you got to spell out the whole words, but those R, O, and L are capitalized. Rivers of Life and the number two. I want you to give something tonight. The Bible says, let those that teach communicate with those that learn. All right, 
The word of God is a two way street. No, you cannot pay for the word of God, but you give because the word of God has blessed you and it and your gift helps us to continue. It helps us to, uh, helps us to continue to give in, to, to pay for Internet service that we might be able to come on live. So I want everybody I'm going to give mine to. I want you to give something in the name of the Lord. Don't 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 not give give something. As a matter of fact, I want to give my gift now. Amen. Because I want God to bless me. I, I want God to open the windows of heaven and, and pour me out a blessing. Amen. And I know I know you want the same thing. Amen. I just gave my gift. Just that simple. I just got my confirmation too. Amen. So give, give, give something. If that word blessed you tonight, give something in the name of the Lord. Again, I love each and every one of you. Remember to keep believing and keep flowing because the Bible says, if you believe on me, as the scriptures have said, and I know if we were all together, we would, we would be filling that sanctuary with these words. If you believe on me as the saint, as the scriptures have said, out of your belly shall flow what? rivers of living water. This is what we believe and this is what we profess. Amen. Again, God bless you all and good night.